All right, so one of the discussions I was having not too long ago, um, we're getting closer and closer to the end of the year, obviously, yeah, right? Yes. Um, we're all quite a few years, or at least me and John in this room are quite a few years removed from high school. Ricky, you're about a couple of decades removed from high school. <laughs> Fucking um, <laughs> Every single... I'm only <laughs> fucking four years older than you. Um, <laughs> it's not much in the grand scheme of things, mate. You're mid-twenties. Deal with it. Oh, stop it. Damn it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah oh. we are, I graduated in 2011. I graduated in 2012. Oh, you hit me hard there with the mid-twenties. Yeah, I exactly. am in my mid-twenties yeah. now, yeah. aren't I? Yeah. yeah. I'm, oh. mid, I'm mid to late twenties. Oh, you're in your mid-forties, Ricky. Shit. Fuck off. Oh, too far. You got it in again. Anyway. <laughs> he still qualifies as 30 under 30. So. Oh, he's almost on the pension card. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! Hat trick. That? What are you? What are you? What are you? Paul McCartney. Don't trust anyone over thirty until, <laughs> until you reach thirty, and then you're like, no, it's when I'm sixty-four, and then you turn sixty-four, and you're like, you know what? Fuck this. Age is Don't just worry. a number. We're currently celebrating the twenty-four year anniversary of that one SpongeBob joke, where it's like, what's funnier than twenty-four? Twenty-five. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm 25. So no one, no one thinks I'm funny anymore, Ricky. It's you, okay. You know. I know you don't watch. SpongeBob. You know You're an that idiot. I've never seen. An episode you need of to watch SpongeBob. Are you serious? You fuck I've face. never seen an episode of SpongeBob. Holy fuck! Never. I know it's a fucking crime. Yeah. You, so you, you miss out on the meme of like the Super Bowl where SpongeBob came out and he fucking absolutely. No, 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 see, SpongeBob I, has never made a bad tune. I know. I know SpongeBob based solely on the memes. <sighs> and, and and at what point have you just said these memes are so funny? That I should probably go watch the show. Uh, yeah, no. Nah. Oh, you're a baboon. Anyway. Any, oh, anyway. That hurt me. Um, yeah. So the discussion I was having, because we are getting close to the end of the year, oh God, don't remind traditional me. gimmick for the end of the year for high schoolers is they do a thing called schoolies. Yep. Right? Big. You finished your final ATAR exams and you're like, fuck it. I'm like 18. I guess most of us are 18. Some of you are 17. That's what middle class, that's middle to upper class kids do that. Us working class kids stayed at home in our underpants and drank cans of Coke. In well, then the this is just for the middle class and above. Now, I went to Torquay. Yeah. The, the, the spots are Byron Bay, Surfers Bay, uh, Surfers uh, in Surfers uh, Paradise. Surfers Paradise. Surfers Paradise. Surfers, <laughs> fucking my bad. Gold uh, Coast. Gold Coast, right? Yeah. Now, that's where the flex is. No, if you're like, flying like out a, of the state yeah. to do a schoolie, that's a flex. If you're flying out of the country, that's your upper tier. Yeah, I've yeah. known people that have gone to Bali, Bali. for schoolies. And well, I'm just ba- like, what Bali, are you doing? Bali is cheaper around schoolies time than going to go on the Gold Coast. That's true. It they they pander to it. They, yeah, yeah. They pander to it. It makes more sense economically. Like, I wouldn't say that it's upper tier to go to Bali. If you went to if you went to Cabo, or to fucking Cabo. Fiji or something like that's a flex. Oh, dude, going Cabo to, was on my list. Going to Cancun, just for Cancun. Or, yeah, exactly. If you wanted to be like, yeah, let's American spring break this shit in December. Right? Like, You're the only one on the beach there. <laughs> You're the only one because it's the middle of fucking, <laughs> fucking winter. winter. <laughs> Pretty sure it's still fucking hot. It in, is. In oh, yeah, no, because you're right. But you're right on the equator. Yeah. But it's still thirty degrees. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah. So the gimmick I was discussing was because we are getting so close, and because that is the classic party time for like the 18ers who have just finished. So I'm talking like late November, early December, yeah, if you want to call that school era. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's like a three-week period between like yeah. Yeah, November, December. Now, it almost is an unfortunate thing for like people who are still like kind of our age to go out partying at that time because you almost get wrapped in this discussion of, oh, you must be a Thule. Now... Tooley, the term being defined as someone who is above the age of, I guess, 18, who has yep. not just finished high school, yep. mm-hmm. but then is like partying amongst their scene. Yep. Question is, uh-huh. is there an acceptable limit, so age limit, to still be a Tooley? 18. Now, you're well, hard okay. and fast on 18, Ricky, yep. which so I'm he, fucking shocked by. So yep. here's my thing, right? I would give a pass to a 19-year-old if they graduated... Univer- uh, high school that year Like if they got held back a year So you're, right? you're hard and fast On the fact that it has to be they The have graduation They have graduated that year yep. yeah. So it can't so be like I've just maybe like I've just done a gap I've come back Haven't started uni yet I'm 19 I'm 20 No And I so happen to be At Surface that's, that's, Paradise That's, that's, that's a Thule That's a does, Thule Does Thule have a second meaning Where you can be a Thule At 18 if you dropped out in like year 10 to go and do a trade, but all your friends that still left, like still finished high school. That's true. I've known people that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. But I, this is all implying that technically is a con- negative connotation. Well, yeah, everyone. I yeah. think, yeah, everyone resoundingly accepts that Thule kind of has a negative vibe to well, it. Well, because a, a Thule is a sexual predator. Like for me, in my mind, a, t- a Thule is just one, is, is honestly one layer above a pedophile. <laughs> Right, Shit. Like, they're eighteen, John. I mean, if they're look, in the club. Look, All you, right, like, you go to schoolies to get drunk and fuck. And if you're someone who is not eighteen doing it, even if you're nineteen, it's still just fucking weird because you're probably going there. And honestly, true. If you have if the intention, a, if you're a toolie, 
Are you going with other toolies or are you fucking flying solo and just seeing how you go? Okay, no, no, no. that's weird. A tool, if, you're a, tool, if you're a solo flying toolie, <laughs> then, that's then weird. you fall under John's category you of fall sexual under, predator. In fact, you're actually probably because, lower than a because, sexual predator. Because at you're that point. probably going there to fucking, uh, what's the term? Uh, parad- Prowl, bro. No, well, prep, like, Pray. like paratroop. Prowl. Like, fucking drop in with no fucking. <laughs> Where are we dropping, <laughs> boys? <laughs> yeah, you, you drop in with no, like, accommodation plans. You just go, like, you're just trying to fuck a girl every night just for somewhere to sleep. Oh, banging for bed. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, is. like Have you ever banged for bed? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, you had to think about that. <laughs> uh, well, well he, it, was he, du- it was during uni. It was like the other res, but I couldn't be fucking walking back to my res. So. You got to remember, he's been banging for 60 years. Like, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, John! <laughs> <laughs> he's got to think about it at this point. <laughs> I mean, it was 2009. <laughs> <laughs> it's a decade ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Sorry, that was too easy. That was too easy. You guys can go fuck yourselves. <laughs> and with that. <laughs> and with that, welcome to Pipe Party, a podcast designed to turn a beer into chat into a tax write off. I'm your host, John McLeish. And joining me this week. Uh, oh god, I have to I have to come up with something different. It's the return, John. It's the, re- it's the return. It's the episode one reunion. Yeah, this is the reunion. The uh, so uh, you know, class for the class of uh, uh, the class of you know a few months ago uh, is uh, you know valedictorian David Yang. David, welcome. What up? Uh, you know, a local local uh, local sporting man Ricky Needs. Welcome. I'll take it. And uh, local Chuka man does lo- podcast. And Ch- 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 man. <laughs> <laughs> and Ch- man does podcast. <laughs> Straight up, straight up though, that would uh, probably make the local paper. Because like, because like, so my mom- successful Chuka man has started podcast company in Melbourne. I went, I went to, I went up to Violet Town to shoot um, a TV show for YouTube for like a YouTube TV show thing, and it was like for a little local charity, and that made the local paper. <laughs> right? It was like it, it was, it was sort of like you know, uh, the lady because at the time my mum was working at the Servo Station. Servo Station son comes to town to shoot television show, right? No shit, no shit. I'd been in the town five minutes, and everybody at the local pub knew who I've I was. Only made the oh, you're the bloke doing the TV okay. show. I was about to say, like, what is the most mundane thing you've ever? So you've ever, ever made like the local? I've paper made once. the local paper. Once. I I made the local paper a fair few times back. Like, um, when I say local paper, I'm think I'm, I'm not. Oh, am I talking Herald? No, I think I'm talking Age, and I'm talking like a really small like. No, lo- that doesn't count as a local yeah. paper. Oh, does it count? No, the, I the made, Age. I made, Fuck no, that's a national paper. Well, okay. Oh my bad. Okay. Are there are there regional papers in Melbourne? There is. Yeah, I there know is. there is like there the is. Western yeah. suburbs. There's a star. The yeah. star. The, the, right. it, it, it's a franchise deal. The star. So like yeah. you've got the Dandenong Star, and then you've got like um, the the Cranbourne Star and stuff like that. Like yeah. it's it's it's, it's a sun, right. Yeah, it goes, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like so it is all, a thing. The, there are local papers, but they're all owned by one company. Okay, yeah. so like because back home there is like the lo- like the Echuca paper, the yeah. Echuca like, editorial. It's uh, it's called the uh, the Advertiser. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, it comes out Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, three days a week. Oh, interesting. Um, it's mostly it's mostly about sport. Um, or Ram Raids, as we talked about in the previous episode. <laughs> um, but I've made the sporting page a bunch of times because these play local footy and cricket and that. Mm-hmm. And then I made the front page wearing a dress. Oh, nice. only you. Yep. Only uh, you. So we, we were the first year in our school to do uh, essentially two mock-up days. So the first day was, um, we're seemingly on a bit of a high school theme at the moment. Um, first day mock-up day was last day of actual classes. Yep. And we all cross-dressed. And... You know, went to class and addressed the entire day. Um, it was fun. But at lunchtime, I was still like, I just want to go and kick the footy on the oval. So a bunch of us went across, and I'm in a dress kicking the footy on the oval. And someone from the Riv, the Riverine, that was, that's, that's right, it was the Riverine Herald, colloquially known as the Riv, drove past, just happened to be driving past, and saw a bunch of guys and a couple of girls all cross dressed kicking the footy on the oval. So she comes up and she goes, can I get a photo? What, what, what are you guys doing? We're like, oh, it's the last day of class. So we cross-dress before we actually like do the big dress up tomorrow for mock-up day. And she's like, oh, yeah, cool. Can I get a photo of all of yours? And I'll go talk to the principal and get it like cleared and that. And we're like, oh, yeah, no worries. So we all posed and shit. And it ended up on the front page of the Riv Herald that I think the week. beauty of that is that is really normal in the suburbs of high schools. Just like someone driving around taking photos of kids. No, no, yeah. but no. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is Pur- true. Purporting to be from a newspaper. <laughs> but cross-dressing for a high school finishing their last yeah, day like, is really normal too. Yeah, but it was like it was the first time we had done it and like, mm. uh, at least in our town that we knew of and then now every year since our school has done the same thing and we kicked it off. Um, I think it's kind of fitting actually because we started this with like a discussion of high school. Do you like? Yeah. Do you have a fucked up muck up day story? Like I've got a fucked up yeah. muck up day story. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I drank twenty five beers 
because my girlfriend at the time wasn't drinking. And you're like, okay, I got to double and up. She, <laughs> well, I'm well, drinking and, for two. And she, well, actually, actually, no, that's actually an interesting turn of phrase. Oh, okay. Hey, Ricky, my, you're not firing blanks. My muck up day. All right, do, do we want to do the Ricky virginity story? Because it's a fucking banger. Hit yeah, it. Go let's go. go. All right, let's do go it. On. Okay. Um, so back home, the only way you're losing your V-plate is if you've got a girlfriend. What? But there's no, there's no. You're in yeah. a country town. No, I know, I know. So well, okay, you walk so into a bar, tap a girl on the shoulder and just like, no, no. what are you doing? Or you just walk in into a school. paddock. In high school. Oh, in high school. Oh, you walk into the local woodshop class because I mentioned <laughs> that's all you do. <laughs> I, actually, I actually did wood in, in year 12. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I couldn't do physics, don't, right? Don't, I did don't knock said. woodworking. I did woodworking in high school too. Yeah. It's fucking rad. Woodworking yeah, I did it too, but I didn't take it past VCE. I, made I, a, wish, right. I wish I could have done it in VCE, to be honest. I made a bench. Anyway, so... And this, <laughs> full circle, you did it on the bench. No, I did it on a couch. So the I got my I had a girlfriend in year 12. And like had previous girlfriends, but we didn't sleep together, whatever. But so she wanted to like make it special. Oh, Wait, hold on. So it was you losing your virginity, but was it also her losing her yeah, virginity? We, we lost it. I know, I know. It's fucking cute, isn't it? She wanted to make it special, but her mistake was telling me a month in advance. I forgot. <laughs> Because I, I don't, like, you know... You I both, like how you, you said both, it was, it's not your mistake, it's her mistake. For telling me a month earlier that she wanted <laughs> you to... You should have known. So it was it was a friend's 18th, and we are going out to Kyabram, which is one of the small towns outside of Echuca, right? <laughs> yep. And she was like, I want to do it there, because she had, like a, like, a fucking bungalow out the back of the property with, like, a fucking, like, couch and bed and shit. Yep. And she's like, we'll stay in there, and we'll, we'll have it. But she's telling me, like, a month in advance. I'm... The fucking you guys know me. I'm not good with plans, bro. Yeah, true. I am fucking terrible. <laughs> you like, barely is... rocked up today. I yeah. know exactly. So I'm bad with plans, right? So she tells me, and then it just kind of gets dropped. Like she doesn't like keep updating me each week. Yeah, right. I fucking just forget about it. So How is I'm... 18 year old Ricky's brain not being like, I know, I'm gonna get laid. I'm gonna get laid. I know. But like at that point in my life, because I just turned 18, it was like, no, beers with the boys, beers with the boys. All oh, right. Okay. So I fucking got a lift out there with one of my best mates. It's still one of my best mates to this day. Polish off a six pack on the fucking 15 minute drive between Chuka and Kyber. Oh, oh, you're I, dealing with drunk dick. Uh huh. Yep. Oh. We'll get to that. Um, I get to the party about half an hour before she does. Polish off another six pack. My mate rocks up with his brand new ute. He's still sober. I'm like, oi, do you want to go do doughies? He's like, fuck it, yeah, let's go, get, let's go do doughies. <laughs> so, wait, as, as my. This sounds like the perfect country love story. As, no, as my <laughs> girlfriend arrives at the party, I'm leaving half pissed <laughs> with my mate. <laughs> And I'm just like, oi, Jordan just got his new ute. We're going to go do doughies up the dirt road. We'll be back in an hour. <laughs> but babe. <laughs> yeah, no. Right. So she's not happy with me. Oh, okay. She's we questioning go, her life choices yeah, at this we point. We fuck off for an hour. <laughs> right? Go do doughies and shit. I nearly crash his ute. We come back to the party. I continue to drink. I've nearly polished off this slab as an 18-year-old boy. Not a good idea. <laughs> no. She is fucking furious at me. Because you can imagine for the last month, all she's been thinking about is, I'm it's, about to get this Ricky dick. Yes. All right. Um, she's coming, she's shaved. I can't I remember. She's been talking about it with her girlfriend. Exactly. No, yeah. like, this has been I like, haven't told the boys shit because like- You just haven't thought about no! it. No. <laughs> you would think that like it would be the biggest fucking deal in the world, but I was just like, no. Nah, you think man. you'd make the paper, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but no, I'm just like, no, I'm fucking going on 18th. I'm going to get on the piss. I'm going to fucking hang out with the boys. Because that was like life when you were in the country town. It was like, it was the mm-hmm. boys, your mates. That's, that's all you live for. Anyway, so the party goes on. I fucking finished drinking because I'm just, I was useless. Anyway, everyone starts, you know, you know, the 18th or like the 21st, everyone sort of starts filtering off and you yep. get people fucking off and people leaving and people going to bed and falling and sleeping on couches and whatever. So it ends up being like there's maybe half a dozen, dozen of us left up. Mm-hmm. And then she just like grabs me and she's like, all right, we're going to bed. I'm like, are we? And she goes, yes, we're going to bed. I'm like, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> anyway, we go up to this little bungalow that's on the back of the property, and has she set it up? Yeah. So like you're walking in, there's pedals on the floor, like not 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 to that. Oh, much, okay, no. okay. She just put like our stuff in there, and she had like the the couch set up or whatever. There's like a fold out bed. Anyway, then she goes, "So we're doing this." I'm like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> doing what?" <laughs> uh, it dawned on me, and then do you know what else dawned on me right after that? I left the condoms in my bedside table. <laughs> <laughs> the shocking part of this story is that you're in a country town and you bought condoms to be started with. Well. Oh, wait. No, this is where the story climaxes. And so did I. Um, so she is not happy with me for many reasons. <laughs> Mostly because I got pissed, bailed on her, and then forgot the fucking dingers. <laughs> but she is determined. She's like, this is happening. 
I'm just like She's so, like I made this dick appointment A month and a Yeah exactly I'm keeping I'm, it I'm keeping this dick appointment <laughs> So She Just She's like Just pull out I'm like <laughs> Are you fucking serious Like even in my drunken state I'm like This is not a good idea <laughs> Ricky This is a bad idea She's just like No it's, it's happened I'm like Alright fine Fuck it I'll just I'll try to pull I can't believe you kicked up a fuss I didn't want fucking kids man Fair enough <laughs> And there's there's a, there's a second element To this story That I'll get to in a sec So we do it I yada yada yada. I think I pu- I'm pretty sure I pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> but because we were both a bit dr- like I was pretty drunk, she was a bit drunk. We both it was it was it was pretty messy because it's your first time. Yeah, it was. And you go on bareback. You don't know. You've, you've got that pull out game. <laughs> you have to develop that pull out game, baby. You know. You got to, years of practice. Anyway, so we do it. It's done. I've now lost my V plates. Fucking happy days. The, ch- the birds were singing brighter the next day. Cut to two weeks later. Oh boy. Yeah. You get the call. Yep. 100%. So she had gone on the pill. Now, nothing gets... She, a, okay, I'm, okay. Okay. she had gone on the pill about um, three months to a... Sorry, three weeks to a month before this night. Yeah, because she prepared for it. She was prepping. She, she was, prep- she but was like, like, I'm but making like, this appointment. But still, like, like, it was more to do with... like She had like just some like minor medic- medical things that mm-hmm. she needed to take the pill for, right? Yep. So she had started it. But when you start taking it, the, that first couple of months, it messes up because your cycle mm-hmm. isn't used to that. Yep. So like a lot of girls will like either have like really heavy periods or they'll miss them. Yep. Or it, their cycle. Gets, I've heard gets the fucked. pill misses the period. Like if you well, were to consistently if you, take the pill, it, it if can. you um, because the on this on the pill like on the pill like uh, the strip, mm. there's like the the days you take that the block it, and then there's like sugar pills at the end. Yeah. Where you're supposed yeah. to have you because you're supposed to have your period. You're meant to. Yeah. No, right. no, you're not meant to. You don't have to. The yeah, sugar, I know, but the thing the is sugar pills were put in because of fucking weirdo priests yeah, and their religious funny ideas about don't periods. Don't take those sugar pills and you just keep taking the, the the pills to stop your period. It can do some minor damage, not major damage, but it can sort of fuck with you. And then if you miss that day, you will get like and my a further a, a later girlfriend had this. She like skipped her period for four months and then missed a pill on the wrong day and then had basically like. So it was like that. It was like four months worth of periods in like a forty-eight hours. That scene in it too, where yeah, just basically, like, oh, yeah, which is all blood. It was just all blood yeah. in the torso. But it, it was more like the pain and shit of just like having yeah, it for yeah. the first. But anyway, anyway, anyway. So my my high school girlfriend, um, <laughs> you get the call. So yeah. So what's happened is the pill is like messed with her cycle. So she misses her regular period <laughs> right after we've had under, unprotected. Sex. Actually, we had sex twice that night. So tw- <laughs> unprotected sex. Yeah, bro. Twice. Yeah, buddy. This is right before year twelve exams. So where do you think my mind is during fucking year 12 exams? It wasn't on the exams anyway, really. No! Well, that's a good point. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd actually already like got my uni spot before exams, so I didn't really worry about it. What an amazing coincidence. My mind was on my penis during my year 12 exams too. Yeah. But for a completely different reason. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, so this is in the lead up. It's all like study and shit. Then on muck up day, on muck up day, as you said, drinking for two. Yep. She'd gone to the doctor the night before. No. Got the te- got like a, a definitive pregnancy, te- like a blood test, not just a piss test. Yeah, yeah. She comes in on muck up day. We're all getting dressed up, ready to go out. And she's like, I am not oh! pregnant. Oh! <laughs> so that is why. You fucking worked. That me. is why I put away 25 fucking beers that <laughs> night because I was celebrating <laughs> not being a daddy and from finishing high school. I was in double celebration modes. I got fucking wrecked oh my God. i got wrecked so bad to the point that i invited because like i lived, <laughs> my, is a big deal. i lived in town all my Ooh. other mates lived on properties and farms rich boy so none of them had any way to get back out of the farms and i was just like yeah come back to my my parents won't give a fuck i was like the pied piper leading these guns back to my place <laughs> there's like eight of my mates just following me back to my house I wake up in the morning. I'm in the middle of my single bed. My girlfriend is one side of me. Another girl is the other side of me. I've got two. We didn't do anything. Um, it was just a matter of like somewhere comfortable to sleep. I had two mates on the floor with pillows. I walk out to the lounge room. I've got three more mates on the couches in the lounge rooms. My parents wake up and just like, who are all these people? <laughs> like they knew who, they were pretty cool about it. My parents were always pretty cool about people coming over. But because I've drunk so much and I'm like pretty young and I'm not used to processing alcohol that much, I woke up still drunk as Fuck. Yep. Like, I was pissed. Like, my brother came in because he had to play cricket that, like, junior cricket that day. And he's like, coming to borrow some deodorant. And he, like, he woke me up and I was like, Corey, what's going on? How are you? He's like, you are fucked, aren't you? I'm like, yep. 
hundred percent. Wait, is this is this the same brother that threatened to call your mum when you cut him off? <laughs> like, yep, same brother. Best later. sibling relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was like still pissed the next day, and then uh, didn't get the hangover until about six to seven o'clock that night, and I was like conscious for it. There's nothing worse than a conscious hangover. Yeah. If it kicks in like when you're awake, it's. Uh, I've only ever had that once. The like I I've managed to carry over the drunk into the following day. Yeah, yeah. And then I had the late hangover. Yeah. Where it's fucked you at like a good five thirty, six o'clock at night and you've yeah. gone, Oh not only is it you know it's like you get it, but you know it's coming. Yeah. yeah. That's the gimmick of it all. Oh it, it it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. But yeah, but like that was like that muck up day was just like a celebration for so many reasons <laughs> that weren't exactly tied to going to school. Um, well, he's, he's beaten my muck up day story Shit I should have started You didn't hang a dummy off a bridge Like Xavier College did No, <laughs> no but Fucking brilliant I love that I, I had a mate that went to Xavier When that happened And he like he was like Yeah no the news blew it out of proportion We didn't get like banned from exams enough And it was yeah. bullshit it was, it was completely fabricated but No because that's, that's Xavier College They're always fucking crazy people there No like, I know yeah. that's, like, that's Xavier College It's a bunch of one percenters And then like that's kids where sociopath- on fucking scholarships Yeah that's where sociopathic one percenters go To get educated yeah. Like yeah 100% That's all that- gonna do like Weird Mine was shit. pretty yeah. standard now I think about it yeah. like the, I'm, I'm the honestly standard... surprised That more Xavier College kids Don't get done for bestiality Like <laughs> they, they seem like Those kind of people Who'd be like you, In order to be initiated Into the club You need to fuck a sheep Like One of those Yeah yeah Like a, like a fucking uh, American frat Yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. You know They seem like those kind of people Yeah they do well, yeah, no, like mine was pretty standard. Like, yeah. this, I I argue the Australian tradition, or like from what I hear, the Australian tradition to be is you pick one of your mates who lives the furthest away from college from uh, the the school. Yeah, yeah. you start there mm-hmm. and you time how long it's going to take for you to walk to school to get there at midnight, right? Because on muck up day, our gimmick was that it's kind of accepted, at least with our school, was like the year twelves will get to the campus at midnight. Granted, the, the, the teachers know, but they don't promote it. And all the cl- all the students know it. But so we get there at midnight yeah. and then you deface the school. Uh, but like okay, defacing right. being like, you know, kind of civilly, like just toilet, toilet paper. paper. Toilet paper. Yeah, and like, water bombs. Yeah, yeah, like water bombs. And like, you know, uh, that fucking uh, gimmicky, uh, you know, uh, like jelly spray. Sh- oh. oh, like silly string. Silly string, silly string, yeah. silly string. Yeah. You deface the school and yeah. like that's yeah. how you start the muck up day going Did your the school day. have a fountain? No. We had a massive fountain in the front yard. We put bubble bath in it. And there that's, you go. Like, that's a, this that's, is, a, that's this, a classic. That's a this, classic. Yeah, this is standard yeah. muck-up day procedure. Yeah. So which we thought, okay, you know, we we gotta we gotta we gotta take it one step further. Okay. Added on top of all this, on our muck up day, it was the last muck up day for the school because the school was closing down. Right? Oh right, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, so you you got carte blanche to do kind of whatever. You we want. had carte blanche to go to town mm. on the school mm. without actually having carte blanche because the school needed to be liquidated and sold. <laughs> yeah. So we couldn't steal assets, <laughs> right? We couldn't break things. You couldn't right. rip copper out of the wall. Yeah, we couldn't steal and rip copper. Out. We couldn't do all that kind of shit. But yeah, yeah. we took the defacing to the next level. This is public information. It's on my Facebook, so I'm not going to get fucked for it. The teachers and shit know. So we're like, okay, we're going to take the next level. We all bought spray cans and all that kind of stuff, right? Right. So we, we start the walk. One of our mates lives in like fucking a country farm in like Melton or some shit. We started there. We're sinking beers on the way there. We're getting on the banter. We're all country dressed farm. up. Country farm. Country farm. Right. And the gimmick always was you get there at midnight, you deface the place and it's either the option of then going back to your closest mate's place to crash and then go to school or you crash on the school, wake up and then you do day, the class the next day or the day off. Right. So we're just like, okay, we, we decided to stay there the night. That didn't go as planned. Yeah. So we get there at midnight-ish, jump the gates, do the standard defacing stuff. There's maybe about 12 of us. Some of us rocked up a little bit later in taxis and that kind of stuff to try and jump in on the gimmicks, right? But we get there, there's about 12 of us. We jump the gates. We're defacing the place. One of my old mates had a uh, master key that he had grabbed from, not grabbed, but had like embedded and imprinted in like year seven. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, so like five years beforehand, yeah, in plans. preparation. This dude's playing the long game. Yeah, this guy was on it. All right, so he had managed to get the imprint of the master key and make a key. So this master key accesses and bypasses, quote unquote, bypasses the security system yeah, right. All right, of the school, mm. to which we thought. So he's got the master key and he's just like, fuck yeah, we're going inside. No other muck up there has managed to go inside and deface. It's all just been on the outside. So we jump inside and we're just moving shit around, placing tables and weird shit, moving everything around, right? To which we didn't know a silent alarm had gone off. Ah. Silent alarm wasn't activated by any of the outside gates, but only on the inside doors. Yeah. Silent alarm has gone off. We didn't know this. So we're still going about it. Now, the cherry on top of all this was we bought a bunch of ladders and shit to go up to the main roof, 
right? And spray paint class of 2012 on the top of the roof, which can actually be seen from Google Images. Google Images, if you were to go into the location of our school, you can see class of 2012 on top of it. That's how fucking solid this was. Nice. So we had spray painted that. At the end, we didn't even get to finish the 12 before we heard fucking sirens coming from down the street because <laughs> that silent alarm had gone off proper solid, right? So the sirens going down. We got the boys down the bottom going, what the fuck? We're dipping. It's me and a couple of others on the roof going, what the fuck? We got to get down and dip. We have no cars. We have no way of getting out of here. We essentially have to just sprint and hide in bushes. Right, so we get down the fucking secu- the security team, which is just local Wilson security. Yeah, right? yeah like yeah. they have very little jurisdiction to arrest and cuff us, so we're not yeah. too worried. They're pulling up on the side with fucking flashlights, searching the campus, going, "All right, what's going on here? What's going on here?" To which we're just hiding around corners, fucking navigating around this bullshit. Right, it's kind of a big is, campus because this is your home turf. You know this school. We know the school. They right? don't know it. Well, they know it ish. So they yeah. had come from a back gate to yeah. go, and but they were doing like very standard search and sweep. Right, it's very standard security procedure, search and sweep. They just had the, just just two guys, right, with flashlights walking around, going, "All right, let's kind of check the crevices of the buildings." We knew they were starting at the back. We were on the roof, so we'd gotten down, climbed into one of the top uh, rooms um, through the windows, and then navigated our way, like literally, it the fucking picture the scene. So we're going from hallway to hallway, just ducking over like this, going, "Oh, oh, okay, security's still outside. They're checking the they're checking the home ec room right now." We dip downstairs. Elevator wasn't working, so we're like, "Fuck it, we just gotta take the stairs." Dip downstairs. We go to the front desk. They're there, right? Yep. As we turn, we see them with the lights. We're like, "Okay, fuck." There's about three of us. I have never seen three blokes be so goddamn silent in my entire life, right? Especially you. Especially me. We ducked out the back to which one of my mates had pulled up in a fucking car that he had taken from his parents. He's 18, he's driving, right? He's pulled up in a car out back next to the security van. So we've now had to have gone <laughs> backwards nice. to where they had parked in order to escape. But they happened to be at the... Fr- oh, it was such a fucking scene. Anyway, make a long story short, we had managed to navigate around the home ec room to which they had now moved into the main building, searching that area, realizing, okay, the year 12s have been here because the fucking place is defaced as shit. We were there for about an hour and a half already. Yeah. We jump into the back of my maid's car and we fucking speed off. We get there in the morning to... <laughs> The principal standing out front, right, questioning every year 12 walking in going, (laughs) okay, boys. (laughs) Okay. Defacing is one thing on the outside. Who moved the fucking chairs and shit around in reception and put them in the other rooms and all that? Because that's a fucking ordeal. Now we've got to do that before actual classes start. Are you serious? Because, okay, so at my my year 12 muck-up day, we, like... We didn't go too crazy, right? We weren't particularly crazy about that kind of shit, especially because the Xavier College shit went down one of, like the year before, so they were pretty yeah, a couple heavy. Years before you, yeah, yeah, so they were pretty heavy on us. Oh, Xavier College has done something crazy the year before well, me too. They yeah, always yeah. do some crazy shit. Yeah, the, and, like, the, the big one that got them in head trouble was like I think it was my year level, but then like they kept doing shit after that. They as well. did well, yeah, of course, because yeah. there was like a pride. Oh, we got to show up those people. Yeah, right. So like yeah, but they were leaning on us a bit. But what we 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 um we glad wrapped the principal's office. Like oh, I, right. I, I, yeah. I don't, and I don't just mean the door. I mean yeah. the whole every fucking yeah. individual object. Yeah, right. That's a classic. That's a classic. Yeah. Yeah. But in order to do that, you have we to get inside the, the building. As well. Yeah, like, yeah. But like, like I don't know. Maybe because it was a collaborative thing. Like we talked to teachers about it, and they were like, "Dude, that's funny as fuck." Yeah, and like the principal wasn't in on it, but like we were like, "Do that." Or like, technically, it was the vice principal. We didn't do the actual principal because uh, okay. she was like, she was weird. Right, you just didn't interact with her. She the was vice like, principal is usually a bit more chill. Th- no, no, our vice principal had no chill. He was an oh, asshole. Oh, really? Yeah, he was a right... He, he, Interesting. He the was, vice is generally the people person. He was, yeah. yeah, but he wasn't. He was an asshole with some masculinity issues. Uh, um, yeah, you don't want that. No. Um, but like, but at the same time, he, like he, he was kind of the closest thing, so we went, okay, we'll get him. But we had it in with the teachers, and she was like, yeah, cool, and they like let us into the building and like did it all. Like, Yeah, defacing inside is like, it's cool if you're like, if you plan it. I suppose that's not I suppose bad. That, I suppose that's the key difference. Though. You didn't plan it somehow. Like somebody was like, "Yeah, remember that master key I made I, five I, years in advance." I, I just thought, like, as you were saying, I'm like, that is the greatest thing ever. Is like if that school had it kept going, the tradition, yeah. the no, the tradition would be go there, purposefully set off the silent alarm, wait for security to arrive, and like it. It, now that's the game has begun. That's the game. Dude, the game that's has how begun. we played it. Real yeah. life, real life Fortnite. Yeah, yeah. that's how that's, we played that's it. The, yeah. That's the storm barrier. Yeah. Exactly. The in. game has begun. You have to get out of the school while the Wilson security is walking around and can't be seen. Anyone gets caught, they're fucked. Anyone that gets out, they're the fucking hero the next day on campus. Right. That it's, is that. That is such a fuck. Anyone out there 
that happens to have a master key to your school this muck up day, that is your game. You break into the school, not that we're advocating this, but this is just an idea. Break into the school, set up the silent alarm, and whoever escapes the security, you are the kings of campus the next day. Because that is such a fucking game. I love that. It but was like, all we talked about that following. That like, is, it was, oh, that is so good. It was, so, dude, I'm so, so fucking, fucking good. Put yourself in those situations. No, no, no. It's so fucking nerve wracking, like, man. My, my brain would just instantly go into like, all right, the, the game is afoot. It's Predator. It's fucking Alien. It's everything. Like every fucking 80s movie I've ever watched. Home okay. Alone. It's, so, home alone. it's home alone. It's home alone. <laughs> so I just want ah. I just want to say something real quick because now that you've said that this this episode is now for sure getting played as evidence in a courtroom, right? That's now. fine. So oh, yeah, at the trial of David, at, at, yeah. right? At the yeah. trial, at the trial of us. So all I want to say is, but, but, buttholes, but, but. There you go. See now that's now officially on the record. Oh nice. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Enjoy that. I, think that'll be, that'll be, that'll be, I just I just wanted to do that for like for, for, for to preserve history. You know, when people look back on this period of history, and if there's nothing interesting, they can look back on our court documents and be like, "Oh, look at this!" At you know, at, at during at some point during the during <laughs> during the court proceedings, somebody just said butts. <laughs> I think uh, and I don't know when it was or what school did it, but I think the greatest muck up day gimmick I've heard of in Australia, at least, was someone had managed to get a cow. Onto a second floor of a school. <laughs> what the fuck? And the gimmick was that they couldn't get the cow out of the building. <laughs> Please tell me they had to like tear down half the building and get a crane in there or some shit. Like, but which my question was, how the fuck did you get the cow in, in the, the building? building. <laughs> well, it's just pretty easily to cow somewhere. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe up cows, the stairs, but maybe, when they got into the school the next day, the fucking cows just roaming on the second floor, but it can't <laughs> go down the stairs. The teachers don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, maybe cows oh, can't go down the stairs. That's the greatest gimmick I ever heard. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that. Fuck. Fucking hell. All right, so that was like muck up day. Like, was your schoolies eventful? My schoolies? Yeah. Oh, the standard school is. Yeah. I think we went Torquay or some shit. So like, did we. Yeah, yeah, very we, we, we did it on the cheap, right? We went as cheap as possible. We camped at the Torquay caravan park. We had like one person had a cabin, then I bought like my really nice eight person tent. And we just did it on the cheap. But we did like eight nights. Because I think the perfect, oh, eight nights on the school is. Yeah, we, we were like, we want a week off. Oh, so yeah. we did like full eight nights, got on the piss every single day. Like there was like a spa and a pool at mm. the caravan park. And we like literally sat in the spa for like most of the days. We went and got those, you know, the orange concentrate juice or drink. It's not juice. Mm. Orange, <laughs> orange drink. drink. Yeah. Orange yeah. drink, yeah. You I get know. one of those two liter like cartons. And then a 700 of vodka. You dr- either drink or pour out 700 of the fucking juice and pour the vodka in. You just sit in the spa all day with a straw and just sip on that. By the time you get out of the spa, you're fucking oh, yeah, done. Yeah. You are fucking it's great. Cool. That's, like, that's the perfect school. And then we, ma- we made friends with the people across the, like, the, the little like, path from us. They literally rocked up to our cabin one night, knocked on the door. We opened the door there. They were the fucking beer bong. Just like, hi. Here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. gave, gave us a beer bong. We just partied for them for the rest of the week. We got kicked out every single night because like, it was an official schoolies event like place. But... So we had like wristbands and shit, but there was still like members of the public staying in this caravan park. So the owner every night would just rock up to like all the cabins that had schoolies in it. And he was just like, just fuck off to the beach till morning. Like, all right, <laughs> so we like, we had like people in like, we had like, uh, by the end we had like shopping carts. We would just like, like load alcohol into those, walk them down to the beach and then just abandon them that, that, that morning and then just walk back. Like that was, it was pretty standard. Like we, the only thing we did that and was like- And standard's the best. Like yeah. The only thing that we did that was really illegal was um, because we took a ute and a car. Uh, we had a couple of mates meet us down there three day, uh, two or three days later and we didn't have enough like seats to get to the beach. So me and a mate sat in the back of my mate's ute tray with like the fucking hard tonneau cover over us and just to get to the beach and back. About the only illegal thing we really did. It I think was, the hardest Aside thing from drinking in public. I did, yeah, we did that. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. At a certain well, point, pub- do we even pu- call it? Public drinking, littering, petty theft, like... Yeah, all right. We did a few illegal things. Negligible. It's fun. It's, it's fun. Like, like Nick in a shopping trolley... Yeah, it's still, is that it's technically petty theft. I know, I know, but like we've all done it. Come on, yeah, yeah. no, we, oh yeah. no, we absolutely. Oh, look, do we want to list all the minor fucking no, crimes no, we've just, done? I'm just like, it's such a like. I, I, know, a crime I know, a day. I know now they got like the like the fucking the little things on the on the wheels that like if you take it outside of a certain range, it just locks. What? What? Yeah. What kind of fucking advanced shopping carts are you dealing with? It's yeah. like fucking like the coals in the. I seat. think it's advanced having the fuck the, the fact that I have to put a dollar into a fucking yeah, machine no, no. now. No, no. That's, that's, that's some three thousand nineteen shopping trolleys, man. Do you know what the really annoying thing is? Just like, because you got like the chain for like to unlock to the trolley behind it. Yeah. 
they always like they're just not fucking long enough. I know it's like it's literally one link too short. But had they make it one link too longer, then it's like oh, I can just fucking circle yeah, I know, back. I know, and but fuck it's like, myself it's in like the they could they could have like, made it like three links too short, and it still would have worked. But the fact that it's one link too short, you just you believe every time you're like, I can make that work. I can spin it around. And can, then there's always the dickheads get that get, get the big trolleys and then the smaller trolleys and then put the smaller trolley into the big trolley spot. Yeah. And then you try to put another big trolley into where and that you can't small do trolley is. But you can't fucking... Oh. People, like, are we the only country people, that has a fucking system where our trolleys have to be bought for or rented where you have to put a dollar or something? Like, I honestly don't know. I don't know. But, but like... They don't even do that at my local one anymore. They really? They've just oh, because they've realised just how stupid it is. Like, I mean, well, I mean, part of it was that people, probably because you're people, bolt cutting them off. Yeah, I was going to well. say people yeah. came along with bolt cutters <laughs> and cut the key off, and then we would just keep that as like that's your key, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, and then like you, you strategically go around a coal store, and then as people are shopping, you just go up behind their trolley and take the dollar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> just do it for everybody. If you walked around a, a packed coals and you did that, you would get like fifty bucks. It's not bad. Dude, the amount of trolleys like Jason, <laughs> I re- like full credit to the man. Like yeah. I respect him, but he's a stingy bloke. His gimmick <laughs> was like, he would always take the trolley back when we'd done shopping, right? Yeah. Because he'd like to get the dollar back. Common courtesy yeah. as well. And I respect it because I drive, he takes the trolley back. Yeah. Good system we have. Yeah. But upon doing that, his thing is like, okay, I'm just going to walk around the center for a little bit and just see how many like rogue trolleys have been left where people have looked at it, gone, ass- assessed their time just and like, said, fuck it. My time is not worth the dollar. <laughs> To go and walk over there, put the trolley back to get my dollar back. I'm worth more than that. Yep. Jason's like, I'm not worth more than that. I don't care. A dollar's a dollar. So he goes full on the terminal. He, that, that's 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 what that's what um oh god, what's his name? Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Tom Hanks did in the terminal. By the way, trash movie. I hate the terminal. Yeah, don't like it. It's gotta be his worst nope. overrated. Nope. Steven Spiel, best film Steven Spielberg ever made. What? Yep. Oh, Ricky's got something to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we talk about this. We talk about Top Steam's movie. In my opinion, The Terminal is the best film he's ever made. Jurassic Park exists, right? <laughs> there it is. So does Schindler's fucking list. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, all right. Schindler's list is better. E.T. Close Encounters. Catch right. Me If You Can. Ca- he did Catch Me If You Can? Oh, yeah, he did. oh okay, okay, okay. That's his best film. It's fucking fantastic. It's Leo's best film. Yeah, I'll give you that. Hands down, Leo's best. It's also Tom Hanks' best film. Well, yeah. I forgot Tom Hanks is actually in that. Yeah. Shit. He's yeah, fucking he was. Great, man. But yeah. He, he, Tom like Hanks talking. has got something to do with planes, man. Like he's got a, he's got a fetish for planes. <laughs> he, no, he, every I, every third movie he does, is he's something either to do falling with out of them or crashing them yeah. or Forrest Gumping. Man, man, man likes his planes. Yeah, he's been a pilot. He's been a person who's oh, been. Oh, yeah, he was Sully. Yeah, he yeah, was Sully. That's what I'm saying. Well, yeah. he was, he's been stuck in an airport. He's been a pilot. He's been a victim of pilot crashing. Yep. He's been a person who has had to chase pilots. Like, yeah. The man loves fucking planes, which that's I respect. An, that's an interesting like. Yeah, hot take from David on this one there. No, it's just like some guy who's like been in a very specific like string of movies that all sort of revolve around one profession. That's I mean, I can't name anyone else. No, I know, but I'm like, that. that's like, just like I know, but I know like Tom Hanks has been in a lot of fucking movies. But like that's a, yeah, that's that's an interesting little like tidbit, little little, little IMDb trivia for you. Oh, now that you've mentioned that, check that one up. I'm trying to think about check like, that one up on IMDb. Like, hmm. do that. Like Morgan Freeman obviously plays a very particular kind of role, obviously, but he not does. professionally, like yeah. in the sense of like it's his job. Yeah. Um I fuck. mean he was God, so essentially at one point. Oh yeah, he plays God. All jobs. Like Denzel Washington to me is synonymous with like oh, leader? Yeah. Nah, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's always like you know, he was Malcolm X, he was a uh, Remember the Titans? Yeah, coach. He was a gangster kingpin. Yeah, I was um, gonna say, yeah he was the fucking uh, training day. Yeah, exactly. Like head cop, uh, head detective, whatever. So yeah, he's he's a very yeah he's a very commanding role. I fucking love Denzel, man. Dude, Denzel's my favorite so African American actor of all time. I like that you had to weirdly. Not weirdly. Don't make it awkward. It's only awkward if you make it awkward. I'm gonna make it. He's awkward. up there with Will Smith. <laughs> okay. If Will, Will Smith, Smith Will ends Smith. his Smith. career and Will doesn't Smith. win an Oscar, Will Smith. What do you mean, Will Smith? Will Smith. I'm. I'm I'm done. What do, you, what do you mean you're done? I'm done. Well, you don't, you, I, don't, I don't care anymore. You think he's you think he's you think he's done? Yeah, yeah. Aladdin is his highest grossing movie of all time. If anything, he's just hitting his stride. <sighs> Fucking hell! God damn it, Disney! Why do you keep doing this? No, but just okay. The Will Smith we had in the nineties that was peak. Peak Will Smith. Okay, you, you can't deny that. Ever since, and I think this is it's like one movie. Okay. One movie in particular, After Earth. Oh, oh mate. Yeah. I mate, agree, mate, but mate, like I just I couldn't. I, I don't blame Will Smith for it. I do. Who I do you blame? blame? I don't blame Will Smith. For do it. you blame? I Jayden? blame the production company for or allowing you, it to get you, that far. Or do you blame right? M Night Shyamalan and Ding Dong? I blame him. I blame the person who allowed it, who saw the concept and said, "I'm going to let this happen." I don't blame Will Smith for that. 
it just it yeah, but Will I Smith, agree. Will Smith was the person who said, "I'm going to let this happen." Like, ah, he is and, he did, and he wanted Jaden to be in that movie. That's and what he I'm saying. He wanted to do an M Night Shyamalan movie. I this also was... don't blame Jaden. I think his acting was actually not too bad in that film. It wasn't great. I'm not gonna. I'm not vehemently defending After Earth. I'm just saying that I don't think we should look at it as Will Smith downturn, where like we just can't come back from it. It, well, it was fucking. Crazy. But I will agree. In my, in my opinion, it's that and Hitch were like his two worst movies. What? Ooh, yeah. Here we go. I'm in for this. Come on, boys. Are let's, you fucked? Let's have it out. Let's have it out. No. Come on. You no. don't rate Hitch. Not Hitch s- has no. to be one it, of his, his most quotable. Shut the fuck up. It's his weakest what? performance. Oh my. I'm having so much fun right now. It, it's his weakest performance. Like, not, not since Fresh Prince of Bel Air has there been a weaker performance. The, and, and he gets then, a pass for Fresh Prince in the early seasons he because it's literally pa- Denak. Yeah he, he, yeah, he gets the pass for Fresh Prince. You're telling me that before. his performance in Hitch was worse than... Okay, I'm, I know I just defended it, but After Earth? It's not worse than After Earth. For me, they're equal because they're bad in different Independence ways. Independence Day? I think Independence Day was better. Independence his Day. performance yes. in Independence Day was better, yeah. Than him in Hitch. Yeah. Hey, don't, don't disparage Independence Day. I'm not, but I'm saying it's not better than Hitch. I'd say it is. I think it's better than Hitch. Independence Day is way Welcome better Welcome to than Earth. Are you pro Hitch Welcome or anti Hitch? Welcome to Earth. Yeah. It's the best line in the movie it ever. It fucking is. Um, no, I like Hitch. I think it's a good movie. I think it's his that performance was actually great in that. I think it's an admirable movie. I think it's a fine rom- romantic comedy. I Yeah, because I'll put it in its lane. I'm not looking at this going, oh, fucking hell, Will Smith should have been nominated for an Oscar for his portrayal of Hitch in Hitch. No. Like, but for what it was. As a romantic comedy movie that Will Smith had done with fucking Eva Long... Not Eva Longoria, was it? Yeah, uh, no, no, um, um, it was uh, the other... I can't think of it. I can't think of her name. Uh, She's Tora, hot, Eva, to- Eva... No, not Eva, Eva Torres. That's a wrestler you don't Oh, you just kept shit. <laughs> God damn it. My brain just will not let um, me... Um, no, but the gimmick being... It's going to do our head in because he's looking it up right now. And, and like, Kevin James was a... Uh, Kevin James was the dude. And Kevin James is fucking sensational in it too. Um, she was in... Well, I can think of movies. She, she was in The Other She was guys. in The Other Guys and she Will, was she was in, will Go- Ferrell's She was in fucking Ghost Rider. Um... Also, it was, it was Eva Mendes. Eva, oh, Eva Mendes. Mendes. Eva Mendes. Eva Mendes. <laughs> That's Mendes. it. God damn it. I can't believe I didn't think of that. Dude, okay. There was an Instagram post from The Ringer the other day, and it was listing who, what is the best buddy cop movie of all time? Oh. Uh, now, among the discussion that was is, The Other Guys, t- and I think, the, o- I think the Other Guys has got to be one of the most underrated buddy cop films it of all hilarious. time. It is hilarious. Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg? Yeah. Two people that I just didn't think would actually work so well together no, it work so fucking well together. And The Rock is in the film. You forget The Rock and Samuel L. Jackson in the film for five minutes. For five minutes, yeah. But they got like top billing. <laughs> they well. got top billing. Yeah, they did. Um, but like that, this was okay. That I was, feel like I feel like them getting top billing is part of the joke. That's of what I'm movie, saying. The exactly, movie takes exactly. the piss exactly. before the movie even that's starts. What I mean, yeah. That's what I mean. Like that's that's yeah. They make that joke it's one, meta. It's one of those first movies that I know a lot of movies do it these days. But it's like one of those first movies, like the the bit where like the the accountant's office explodes. <laughs> and instead of them being like really cool, it's like, oh my god, that hurts so much. How can people walk away from these and look cool? It's in part like they brought the realism back into like a movie like that. And like it's been done to death a little bit now. Like a lot of movies are trying to do that. Like, you know, Archer has done the best at well, taking yeah, no, the Ar- piss take of Archer, like reality. But, it, but yeah, but it like takes that to like it, and it's a it's a recurring joke. Like his tinnitus. Yeah, his the tinnitus. Fact, the the just, fact that he counts bullets. Mal mal <laughs> Yeah, he's got like he's definitely got autism of some sort. Yeah. Like he's he just he's so just socially awkward it's fucking fantastic but like a lot of movies like they're trying to do that like of like you know let's try to make it as realistic as possible and have that be part of the gimmick of the movie but I think the other guys like pretty much nailed it and yeah fucking but I can't think of any like other buddy cop movies hold on I'm gonna load it up for you yeah come on I'm gonna load it up for you but the other guys are among the discussion I think it deserves it top more list the first man in black Yes. Yeah, Men in Black was, was among it. That was during the peak Will Smith era. Oh, I agree. He was fucking fantastic in that. I oh, love definitely. that movie. Yeah. Um, buddy Cop. All right. I'm trying to think. All right. Here we go. So yeah, we've got go Bad ahead. Boys. 21 Jump Street. Yeah. I think there's some love. I think there's yeah. some yeah, love. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Hot Fuzz. Actually, 21 Jump Street, another movie that does like the whole like... Take the piss out of the gimmicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Rush Hour. Oh, yeah. I forgot Rush Hour gets some love. Is Shanghai Noon on there? No. Yeah, I was gonna say I I, I Were go they sh- cops. I don't know, but I think I would rate yeah. Shanghai Noon higher than than Rush Hour. I yeah. God really? Man. I wasn't fine. Oh with man, Hour. I don't know, man. man. I think Rush Hour is like it's it's an institution. Okay, like who, it's who, who had a better peak? Will Smith in the nineties or Jackie Chan in the early two thousands? Because my God, he was in everything. 
Oh, Ooh. I think Jackie he Chan was in had a big everything, man. Because he did. He was in everything. And I think people fucking love him. In my opinion, peak Jackie Chan for that era was like where where he kind of hit the zenith and then went down again was um the tuxedo. Yeah, that was like, like the yeah. That when they was... took it to that nth degree, and as a yeah. result, they went, "We've gone too far." Didn't it was jumping the shark? It didn't need yeah. to go there. But like, his, and especially like the best part about Jackie Chan movies was all like the fuck ups in the credits. That's what I loved yeah. about but Rush him, Hour, like, man. Him, like watching, like watching him do these stunts over and over and over again. It's just like this dude is fucking phenomenal. And how he takes the piss out of himself. He just seems like such a nice bloke. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but like every time he fucks up, he just laughs it off and then just like like just goes back and does it again. But. God, his peak was huge. So they got Hot Fuzz, which I think... Oh, my that's, God. Shit, I didn't even think of Hot Fuzz. Yeah, yeah Hot, Fuzz. Hot Fuzz is up there. Yep. In fact, anything, if I'm really thinking about it, if I had the top three right here, I would go Rush Hour at one, yep. Hot Fuzz at two, mm-hmm. other guys at three. All right, that's not bad. Any more? All right, we got The Nice Guys. So what's that? Fucking oh, Gosling yep, yep. and... Uh, uh, Gosling and Crow. Crow. I didn't like The Nice Guys. I don't, I don't think that's good. Yeah, no. like of, of the movies I listed here... I like Shane Black it, movies. It had, a, it had a really good premise. It had mm. some good legs. I was like, yeah. oh, this is a really great idea. I really like it. It just was poorly executed. Yeah. On the list, they don't have Starsky and Hutch. Ooh, well, okay. Now look, I think that's a bit look, of a snub. Look, look, look. A bit I, of a snub. I didn't like it. I, I would have put it on the list, but I would have put it very low. Like, it was... It was it, okay, it, was, it didn't age well. Starsky and Hutch for me now exists solely as the do it, do it, do it, yeah, do, it. do it, do it, just do it. That that's it. That's all it exists for. Yeah. That's all so we said Men in Black, did we? Yeah, yeah, Men, yeah in Black. Men in Black yeah. is yeah. up there as well. Solid. Turner and Hooch. Uh, yeah, okay. Turner yeah. Hooch, bit of a bit of a throwback on that one. Yeah. And then rounding it out is Ride Along with uh, Kevin Hart and uh, Ice Cube, Ice T, whatever his name is. I, I, I don't know Ice if Cube. I've made my feelings about Kevin Hart clear on this podcast before, but pass. You don't find him funny. No. Yeah, no. I, like as a stand-up comedian, I've never like gotten into Kevin Hart. Yeah, like, I, I thought he. I thought I always thought he was a good actor, but I never. Yeah. I never thought that his performance was strong enough. The to first, time, I actually think he'll be more renowned for his acting. The when first it's all time I liked him was Jumanji. Yeah. That's, well, that's, that's my. Yeah, that's the pretty much the only movie I really rated yeah. him in. But like he, because he's done a lot of like the black comedy. I don't know. Like, yeah, that was his thing. Yeah, I know. But he, like, he kind I, of brought it back into the I, mainstream. I just feel like, and I, this might not be the hottest of takes, but. Like, he's just a loud Chris Rock. Yeah, I agree. That's how I feel. That's I how agree. I feel, I feel yeah. like Chris Rock does it better. And I think he's actually a budget, um, oh my God, uh, fucking the, the, the jet. Uh, oh my Chris, God, Rush Hour. Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker. He's a budget Chris Tucker. You know, yeah, yeah no, I know. You know what? I yeah. agree. He's a budget Even Chris Tucker. He's a budget yeah. Chris Tucker. Chris um, Tucker, peak, untouchable. Oh, big peak. That man at big his peak. peak. Yep. Like, I'm not talking prime. Peak and prime, I feel like we've got to, like, yeah. as, as sporting fans, you and I know peak and prime, right? Bit prime different. being, like, you know, more of a longevity thing. Yeah. Like, great play. Peak being, like, your absolute highest. Yeah. Right? It's like, Tom Brady has just always been in his prime, but his peak was probably, like... like seven? Like, yeah. Like, yeah, around yeah, there. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But his prime has lasted a very long time. Kobe, the yeah. same thing. Prime yeah. last prime. Chris Tucker didn't have a long prime, but I argue his that peak... peak. That peak. That peak where he did rush hour, that man was at the highest. Oh, he was the highest paid actor. You think, that, you think that's his peak? Absolutely not. I disagree. Ooh. I think I think pink Chris Tucker is the fifth element as Ruby Rod. I, okay, not bad, not bad. That was like not that bad. was like that was like the. There man, was a stretch the, where he was the leading the, man in Hollywood. The man for makes like a, a, the movie. a minute. Yeah, yeah. For but that's minute. what I'm saying. His yeah. peak where he was throwing money at him. Yeah. But what I'm saying is he overshadows Bruce Willis in that movie. And Bruce Willis, this is Bruce Willis when he was on a fucking home run. Man could do no wrong when he yeah. did Fifth Element. It's when Bruce right. Willis still cared. That's when Bruce Willis. I'm saying. It's when yeah, Bruce you Willis get still that cared. Sen- you get the and, sense now, right? No, yeah, yeah, 100. percent And you've got Miljovovic as well. Like oh, you've got a God. really f- and, and Gary Oldman. You've got a fucking strong cast there. What? And Chris Tucker comes in and just shits all over him. I fucking right? love that movie. The so man much. can act. Man, yeah, the yeah. man just came in and turned it up to 11 and said, "No, I will have this movie." Right, like that is Chris Tucker's movie. I love how, like, and that, that's such a like a beautiful thing about psychology when it and comes. By to the films, way, he does you can this. Tell when they try. Yeah, he does this in the first five seconds. He's on film. Yeah, yeah. like it's it's with, like it doesn't take the whole movie for him to do it. He does it in the first five seconds. He and grabs you, he holds on to you, and he doesn't let you go for the next and ninety minutes. He's literally in the last act of the film. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he just shows up, and it's just like this new character. He's this new character. Yeah, and then he's just like. It fucking amazing, and he, and he and he makes the, he is the movie. Is you know, so, I just want to finish but before we wrap this up. I think that yeah, is yeah. such a good piece of take right there. Do you not get the like? You can feel it with Bruce Willis. Oh, he 100%. does not care. No, and I argue he hasn't cared since the last fucking um, Die Hard oh, Four. Die Hard Four. He hasn't cared since there. He didn't even care in Die enough. Hard Four. I wouldn't say he cared that much. Yeah, I would argue he probably no, didn't no, even he... care in Die Hard Three. Yeah. Oh no 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 no. no, 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 no had, that no, was no, when no, he no. cared maybe, and that then was, after that he didn't care anymore. That man. was the yeah. death row. It was die hard. It's, yeah. it's him, Harrison Ford, 
Harrison Ford has not cared for Oh, him. Harrison Ford hasn't given no. a shit since the last no. Indiana Jones, man. No. Like, I think Brad Pitt's not caring anymore. No, I'm getting no, the no, feeling no, that no, Brad Pitt's no, starting no, to not care. No, 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 I think no, after no, Ad Astra, we're going to get no. a, a period of Brad Pitt where he just doesn't I, um, care. I need to go see Ad Astra because apparently it's fucking... I'm keen for Ad Astra. Yeah, I might apparently it's amazing. Him. Apparently he is really, really, really good in well, it. Well, to what I was shooting on it a couple of weeks ago with you. I was just like... Because we, we've all watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and I think now is enough time to like spoil a couple of Oh, I think we're good, yeah. We're past that point. Dude, yep. Leo was on in that yeah. film. Oh yeah, Leo was on. Leo, Le- Leo was trying. And Leo if- has cared since Gilbert Grape. Oh, Leo has not stopped caring. I know. He might be one of the most longevity like actors to give a shit. Yeah, like Marlon he- Brando didn't give a shit towards later into <laughs> his historic Marlon career. Marlon Brando didn't give a shit in his first movie. Like you see, uh, on the waterfront is a fucking timeless classic. I'm not going to hear anything. It is, and he, and he and he was phoning it in then. That's that, he's if just, anything, that's how just sorry how great an but, actor but, him, but, him, but him phoning in is better than pretty much anyone today. Oh, dead set. Oh, and yeah. even yeah. even in fucking Godfather, uh, like uh, Apocaly- Apocalypse Now, yeah, where like he showed up overweight, very overweight to set, um, and they had to like film him basically in shadow the entire time. He still fucking gave a good performance. He did. He did. Yeah. But well, he was, was just like he, he was reading the give. script on set. He, yeah. hadn't, he didn't read the script. He was reading the script and he was reading the book. Uh, what's the name of the book? Into Darkness? Uh, Heart of Darkness. Heart of Darkness. He yeah. was reading Heart... No, he wasn't reading Heart of Darkness, sorry. He had a PA read him Heart of Darkness on yeah. set. But that's why in some of the scenes he has like a little notebook and it's supposed to be like his character's notes. It's actually yeah. just the script. It's the script, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, he, so he's not calling line every five seconds. That's how much he didn't give a fuck and yet it's still yeah. a fucking great performance. It I'm is. also getting the feeling that Jake Gyllenhaal's starting to move into oh, I Don't no, Care territory. Come on, After man. that recent Spider-Man film, it looked like he phoned it in. Really? Man. It, like, comparatively to his past performances, really? it just felt like he was just going, okay, I can kind of just act. Like, you know, just, well, I, just I, act, I know, but right? like, like, he's not doing a fucking Nightcrawler or Velvet Exactly, Buzzsaw but that's what I'm saying. Zodiac. Now he's just taking roles to yeah. just kind of phone he, it he's in. He's always wanted to do a comic book movie. He's got it out of his system. Now he can go back to the art house okay, stuff and start enough. carrying All it. I'm saying is, I I'm guarantee just saying, you, the next art house movie he does, he's going to come out and kill it. All right, fair you enough. Know, I, you know don't who, get me wrong. I am the biggest Jake Gyllenhaal fan of all fucking time. I love the guy. He should have won for Nightcrawler. No, he should have, yeah. But I'm just saying, based on that Spider-Man performance, I wouldn't be surprised if he moves into I just don't care roles. Do you know who's done the opposite? Who started out seeming like they didn't really care and now they're like, they're killing it? Shia LaBeouf. Right. What's Shia right. LaBeouf done recently? Peanut Butter Falcon. Uh, he's actually, he's got two movies out right now. Yeah, right. Uh, one's called Peanut Butter Falcon. The other one is... Shit, I can't remember the name of. He's doing the art house scene, and he's doing yeah, it well. Yeah, he, he's, he's like, doing it. He's hard, like yeah. self-producing, yeah. like directing, writing, acting. He's doing the whole nine yards. Because the last thing I saw him in was the Nymphomaniac movies. Yeah, that was kind of the start of it. like he got sucked in because he was part of the Disney thing. Yeah. Did Holes, which I love Holes. Holes he, was fucking great. Man, Holes, that's that's best. That's peak Shire. That's peak Shire. Unfortunately, that, peak I mean, so I, early. I would say that, that Transformers even two. Oh. Um, no, um, but he got he did that, and then he got like Transformers and shit, and it was like the blockbuster. And he's gone backwards. He's like, "Fuck this! I'm regressing. I'm going back to the art house stuff. I want to do this." For- In order he to was hone on- his craft to come back, don't, he was forget, on, um- don't forget he was also a part of one of the greatest SNL skits of all time, right? Which one? Ooh, what you say? Oh yeah, yeah, the the um. Yeah, the oh fucking what I can't. It was Ooh, Lonely Island and yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. The, like the OC ending. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah that's um, what I mean. Like, but he keep was, in mind, I think he's also still kind of young too. He is. Yeah, he's yeah. Oh, like yeah. he's like he's, early thirty. Yeah, like he still has what time if he proves himself um, in the art house. But he was on. He'll uh, be a leading man eventually. He was on a recent episode. I think it was like the season ten premiere of Hot Ones. Ooh, and the shit he was talking about. He's thirty three. There you go. Yeah. Um, he hasn't even hit what we considered like Hollywood's prime age of yeah, leading like man. 37 to yeah. 45. Yeah, yeah. But he was talking about like uh, like the difference between method acting and shit. Like he's talking about Tchaikovsky and stuff. I'm like, this dude is studied. This dude knows. Yeah. Like he obviously got caught in a system that was like, you're in the Disney system. We're going to pump a bunch of shit out of you while you can. Make our money while, while you're still young. Mm-hmm. And then throw you to the fucking wolves, which in this case, the wolves were Michael Bay. Um, get chewed up by that system and then get spat out again and then do a bunch of weird we, art house stuff. Just to end it all, have we discussed who's the best actor or actress to come out of Disney? Because I think I was having a discussion with Locke and I was going, okay, based on Zac Efron's recent Netflix uh, mm. Ted Bundy, yeah. which is a very far cry away from what he used to do with Disney in high school. <laughs> well, no more uh, singing and dancing. Yeah, and none of that yep. anymore. Like To me, that was like, okay, Zac Efron has officially made it. Right, he's now out of that Disney system to a point where I can't even look at him. And I don't even think Disney. Yeah, you could argue Baywatch could be like where that really started. Yeah, I know, but that's like a glossy, yeah, fancy like. But then to do the Ted Bundy and then to do it to like the degree that he did it, yeah, in, like I think he really portrayed him well. I'm waiting for you one more. You don't think Miley big... Cyrus did that first? Or uh, I don't consider Miley Cyrus in the an actor. actor. Yeah, not in the act. She, she has. She's acted. in Black Mirror, mm. um, which I think you know is Walt apparently in it's that. Like 
Apparently, like, it's the worst episode in Black Mirror history. Like, it's the worst reviewed. Yeah. In Black Mirror history. So, which is like, it's kind of not saying anything, given that Black right. Mirror is fucking dope. Yeah, I know. Um, um, but no, like, it is like a. It's it's a rotten on rotten tomatoes. Yeah. But would it's, you say that's the only one that's rotten? Would you say that Zach Efron is possibly of the Disney system? Yeah, that the biggest that one the one to like have he had a really really high ceiling in Disney and he achieved it in High School Musical yeah. it was huge right he yeah. had a big Disney run mm. and then he went low where he kind of did you know thirteen turning thirty or whatever it was gimmick where he played uh, Matthew yeah, Perry Matthew Perry I love that movie right great movie seventeen seventeen again seventeen again, 17 17 again. 17 again. again. Yep. Yep. um he had that lull right and then yep. he did uh, the fucking Bad Neighbors. Right, and then yeah. he came back up, and he came back up, he came back Fuck up. Man, to a point now where I look at him post this Ted Bundy film, and I'm going, okay, the man can kind of be taken I, very seriously. I want him to do one big like actor role. Yeah, I, I, I know the Ted Bundy one; it was good. I watched it. I to me, it was that was a, that was a good example of him doing a, yeah. a solid character actor. I think it's an introduction to him. Yes, I don't I think, think we've seen what. Okay, he. Can I agree. Do. I think we've only he, been here's, here's my here's my example. Um, What's his face from uh, Edward Cullen from um, Robert Pattinson? Robert Pattinson, I think. Now you're right. That dude, if he just does Batman, did, no, no, just did a movie called The Lighthouse, where it's literally just him and Willem Dafoe in black and white. The movie is shot in fucking four three instead of sixteen by nine. Mm. It is like as art house as it fucking gets, right? And he apparently has killed it in this movie. I really want to see it, but like he's done that. He did The Rover, which was a really really good like. Aussie fucking like little mm. indie movie. Yeah, right. Um, he's like really like clearly that guy once again got stuck in a role where it's like, okay, I'm going to make all the money I ever need to make in my life doing these four fucking films. But then I can have the freedom to go and do whatever the fuck I want for the rest of my career. And I think like he has come out and said that's exactly what he did. Mm. He was like, I'm going to make all the money I need for the rest of my life doing four shitty films. But then I can do whatever the hell I want. It doesn't matter if it bombs, it crashes, whatever. I can do that for the rest of my life. You'd argue Pretty Daniel Radcliffe kind of is going through it as well. Because he, he still... He always, even during Harry Potter, he like left and did Equus where he got naked on stage in front of like yeah. f- hundreds of people But every I think night. he's still very much a mold of like, we look at him and go, yeah, you're Harry Potter. Like he it's has, unfortunate. But like, I don't see that anymore. You don't? No, because I've watched nearly every single one of his films he's done since and like, I just see him as Daniel Radcliffe now. Fair, like, it's, fair enough. It's gone to the point where like, he has removed himself. Like he hasn't done a major studio picture since Harry Potter. Yeah, but that, I guess that's maybe what I'm Except waiting Except for, for um, he, did, he popped up in like the Now You See Me 2 yeah, for a little bit. As, I think it was as, as himself. But like he hasn't done a major studio picture as the lead since Harry Potter. I guess that's what I'm waiting he for. Has, you're he right, has, Art House is like the gone, under the radar. He has gone full indie, does all these like small productions and stuff. He still does stage acting and stuff and then he, he'll do stuff like, like fucking Swiss Army Man. Yeah, oh, Such, brilliant concept. Hey, doesn't say a fucking word. Yeah, he's just a corpse for the entire movie, and he gets top billing. Yeah, because it's now. It's that being said, though, I think the the person who's been able to top all of this though is Alec Guinness, because Alec Guinness okay. did not want to do Star Wars. No, he didn't. He really didn't want to do it, and yeah. they were just like, "Oh, come on, you know, like, you, come on, like we need you." And he was like, "Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll do it for a percentage of the gross." Yeah, that one film, Smart Boy, earned him more money than he'd earned in his entire career because it was like or since yeah like the tail end of his career was yeah. like star wars we was started like, that was his last thing wasn't it it was one of the last yeah. things. It was one of the last he things was, he did. Yeah. Pushing it. but that's what i mean yeah. but at that point he wasn't that old he wasn't that old but, but at that old. point he was he had he had fuck you money at that point like yeah. he wasn't able to do whatever the fuck he wanted and what <laughs> he wanted to do was act on the stage and that's what he did for the rest of his life yeah because he had the money from star wars yeah you do one movie like and i think like we give people like robin pattinson a fucking raw deal mm-hmm. um because he's actually a very good actor he is and but look like his profile since being an, just announced as Batman yes. has skyrocketed. Yes. And like now people are starting, because of that announcement, looking at Robert Pattinson going, hold on a minute. F- I, like, I know he was the fucking vampire in Twilight, but the guy can like fucking move, man. Dude, the guy can act. Dude, deal because of Twilight. Because before that, he did Harry Potter and he fucking killed it in Harry Potter. He did too. The guy's an <laughs> actor. The guy's <laughs> a genuinely good actor. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, he died. Yeah. Um, Goblet of Fire is the best Harry Potter of all time. Yeah, look. I'm watching him again. I disagree. That's child abuse on screen, but you know. <laughs> I think it's trash. The whole Harry Potter series is child abuse on screen. Yeah, but that, but that, it's but just that, Harry copying shit year but, in and yeah. year out. He's meant yeah, to be but, studying. But Goblet of Fire is, we're not even pretending anymore that it's not child abuse. Like, this is just straight up child abuse. <laughs> he does no study. He doesn't study shit. He's meant no. to be fucking studying he wizardry at fucking Hogwarts. He didn't even graduate. Yeah. Did yeah. he not? No. Oh, Harry well, Potter the whole is a seventh. Fucking... Have you read them? Seen no, them? I, I gave up after Goblet of Fire because I was like, this is just straight child abuse. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to spoil it for you. Tough deal. Um, I just the, don't give a shit. The seventh book slash movie, movies, um, he doesn't go to school. He's out hunting Voldemort 
Or like, oh, no, because I saw the movie. I, I thought he did go to school. No, no. Oh my god, he doesn't graduate. He doesn't finish school. Harry Potter is a series of films that is against the idea of school. Yeah, but it's beloved by children. Like, it's like if you go to this school, you will possibly die, and you'll get taken over by a dark wizard, and yeah, your headmaster will die in front of you. That's a great. Message. All of which is condoned by the adults who are in charge of looking after you. Fair. Look, if you want to really dig into the, the, the whole Hogwarts thing, it's a fucking quagmire. Well, that's a whole episode of it bullshit. So um, it is, yeah. But so I, let's not do that. But it's bad. It's bad school. Bad school yeah. for bad people. <laughs> yeah, it's shouldn't terrible. Be, shouldn't be a thing. Uh, and I think I think we'll uh, I think we'll leave it there. I want to thank yeah. I want to thank my my uh, my guests today. I want to thank you know, thank you, David. Thank you, Ricky, for joining me today. No, thank you, Sorat. Um, if you like episode this, one reunion, yeah, that, 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 that reunion. Oh, we didn't pitch a new porno. Um, yeah, we did it in a couple actually, episodes before this. Yeah, I know. We'll do yeah. it. We'll do the it. BBC. We'll get it around. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Uh, so, um, well, you know, if you like this episode, please uh, tell a friend about it. It, it. That really helps us out a lot. You know, t- you know, grab their phone, You know, fire up Spotify or fire up iTunes, depending on what their preference is. You know, I'm not going to yuck someone's yum. Um, and, uh, and download an episode and be like, and be like, you need to listen to this right now. And you've got to be like really sassy as you say it. We, right? we advocate the brand. We advocate for you stealing your friend's phone. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, temporarily. We're not stealing. We're borrow, borrowing. Borrowing. Okay. Borrowing your friend's phone. Theft, theft implies intent. Right. It does actually. And we're, we're not. We're borrowing not implies intent as well. But borrowing implies intent to give it back. Exactly. Theft is intent not to give back. Exactly. Right? I mean, is it not, is borrowing not theft until you give it back? Oh, it's such a great area. It's a great area, <laughs> right? Uh, but, you know, so yes, please, you know, tell a friend about it. Get him to listen to it. Get him to listen to this one, right? I'll shout him out right now. Hello, friend. There we go. See, now you can just, they can insert their name. Hello, in Daniel. Yeah. There you go. You know who you are. Yeah, you know who you are. That's right. Uh, oh, most common name on earth, Muhammad. Hello, Muhammad. Great, great. You, Thank you for listening you to our You know who you are. You know who you are. You know who you are. You're, yeah, you're, I'm talking to you. It's, yes, you. Yeah. All right, and with that, this has been Pipe Party. Cheers. Cheers. This is a Hard Fact Network podcast. Find us at hardfactstudios.com.au.